Hey everybody, welcome, hello, welcome hello. to today's weekly MSI Insider live stream. Apologies for the slight delay. We had some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, the monsters were running away no, from we us. Had, so we had, had challenges, Ja. <laughs> not difficulties, challenges. <laughs> exactly. Features, not bugs. <laughs> right? And yeah, uh, welcome me today, Mikey. Hello, hello. Yeah. I think, you know, before we get started, Mike, you just, you just, you know, had a week off, right? So you're fresh, ready to go. For sure. I went you skiing, so I got all freshed up in the mountains. Really? You went skiing? Yep. Oh, yeah. Correct. And look, I didn't break a thing. <laughs> Hello, hey, hello everyone, everybody. Hello, Troy hi. in the chat. <clears throat> Let's see who's in the chat. Troy's in the chat, of course. Hey, Troy. Oh, MSI fan. Oh, hey, it's Mike. Talking about chat. What can chat <laughs> win today? All right, guys. So, uh, of course, per usual, the more, uh, the more the happier. Just, you know, drop everything you like to uh, drop in the chat. Uh, we'll do our best to keep track of what you're saying. And of course, like always, we have a giveaway. But today we are giving away Monster Hunter Rice, which is actually pretty new. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it just got released, the PC version, like uh, day before yesterday. Uh, this is actually in, uh, originally a uh, Nintendo Switch game, but uh, they kind of remastered it into a PC version. And I've had the pleasure to play with it for uh, quite a few hours. And I must say, uh, you know, especially if you guys are familiar with Monster Hunter, uh, it's really, uh, yeah, a, a big pleasure to play. And you so have a cat nice. in the game. Exactly. So you like right off the bat. <laughs> so yeah, just go to msite.com slash two slash insider. You know the thrill. And the more actions you perform, the more chances you will have at winning one of today's, uh, I was going to say stay wallet codes because it's so common that we do it. But you're going to win one of the Monster Hunter Rise game codes that we have today available for you guys. Uh, definitely make sure to check out the uh, loyalty bonus because we have seen from experience with drawings uh, that it does tend to help you win like quite often and gives you a slight edge and give yeah one. and if you like to uh, you know participate in the chat uh make sure to go to our youtube channel or our twitch channel where we are uh, also uh, simultaneously streaming uh because we can keep track of the chat from twitter uh, or periscope and uh you know facebook so um you know if you want to chat with us go to youtube and go to twitch and find our channel the fx factory is asking on twitch where i went skiing i went to italy Oh, actually, I didn't know. I thought you went to Switzerland or something. No, no, no. They got quarantine in uh, Switzerland and Austria. Yeah, that's Nothing true. in Italy. So I had a lot of pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course, guys, since we're still in a hectic uh, Corona period, uh, Mike's not really here. So, you know, I can uh, really make myself disappear <laughs> and I'm gone. <laughs> no, stay safe, guys, at all times, of course. All right, guys. So what do we have today? We have this monitor that I'm going to assemble for you in just a second our brand new MPG Artemis so if you're familiar with our Artemis we put, uh, we put a lot of efforts into Artemis so you should be aware of what Artemis means well so basically it means that it's a thousand R curvature monitor I just saw you disassemble it do you still have all screws <clears throat> one two three where's the phone <laughs> I'm there just kidding it's here <laughs> yeah so this is our Artemis uh, 273 CQRX. So the X, uh, it really means, you know, it's high refresh rate, but you know, I will get into details in uh, just a while, but you know, give you something to uh, bite on already. Uh, QD, of course, so quantum dot. A brand new monitor, and um, we actually have more available, uh, more models available in this range. I will also show you later, uh, you know, what kind of ranges you have. So um, yeah. Obviously, I'll go, uh, I'm going to show you its features. I will live demo uh, some smart gaming features as well, powered by AI. Of course, I'll share with you all of the specs and also the prices. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat and we'll do our best to uh, answer them as best as we can. And we will end the game with, uh, of course, Monster Hunter live game demo. So you can also see you know, what kind of performance is it. It's a QHD monitor, you know, what kind of performance would you need and what kind of, uh, you know, I'm using the ECSTI 5 and what, we, uh, what kind of frame rates we can get out of it. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, talking about Monster Hunter, uh, at this moment we actually have a promotion running with it as well. 
So uh, let me show you on our product page. So here you can see if you just go to our uh, well, web, uh, website, msi.com, and then you look for promotions. So let me just show you how you can get here. Oh. So I'm right now sitting on the UK side, but let me go to the main one. So you go to what's new and then promotions. Here you see the first uh, that's visible Monster Hunter Rise game bundle. Then you just choose an area. So for the sake uh, for the sake of uh, showing you guys what it's about, I'm just going to pick uh, pick the United Kingdom because the language is also, of course, uh, correspondent with whatever uh, region you choose. So here you'll find all the details regarding what kind of products are participating right now, uh, from which you can get the game for free. Anyways. Um, so yeah, if you're planning on upgrading any hardware anytime soon, or you know purchasing your, your first do-it-yourself hardware, or even a you know full uh, full system, uh, this is where you have to check. Uh, if you're a fan of Monster Hunter, definitely make sure to check out uh, you know how you can. Uh, get an eligible model, how you can redeem it, and uh, you know, you can also uh, find some more prices in here as well. Um, yeah, so just go to the back page and check it out. And guys, Emil is saying on Twitch chat, shame is not for Nordic countries, so make sure to join the giveaway because the Nordic countries can also participate in the giveaway, so you can still win one today. <laughs> Troy says, pretty <laughs> sure Mike have many, many Coca-Cola during his day off, only on the way there and on the way back when I have to drive on the slopes. Not so much Coca-Cola. No, it's just beer all the way. <laughs> just beer. Beer all the way. Uh, DFX Factory says, nice, I'm going to fall around in uh, three valleys in one week. Nice, nice. <laughs> okay, without further ado, let me assemble the gaming monitor for you. So I have already laid out all the parts that's essential to the setup, of course. Uh, I have a little hood here uh, that's going to cover the uh, backside after the uh, standard has been mounted into uh, onto the monitor so first of all of course you start with the full metal foot very sturdy and it's really simple guys if you have seen our live streams before uh, you're familiar with the process so it's if a you ever end setup. up in a fight with your neighbor you can just bring your monitor foot yeah it's actually really dangerous if you put it that way okay so don't do it <laughs> we did not recommend this yeah <laughs> also not covered under warranty uh, let me show you the backside. So, if you're wondering if you can mount this to a Visa setup, an arm, that's definitely doable. We have a 10 by 10 standard uh, Visa mount, so 10 by 10 centimeters. So, and if you want to use your own monitor stand or attach it to a wall or anything, you can just use the Visa mount. So, really, child's play, if you can see what you're doing at least. So Usually when you go. say child's play, that's when it's about to drop, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to drop this, it's uh, <laughs> very valuable. So then of course, uh, you know, just got to put in the screws and that's it. There goes the first one. <laughs> first one lost. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't find the uh, magnetic uh, head uh, screw, so uh, I just took it's the, probably uh, somewhere around the my screwdriver. <laughs> Why do it easy when you can do it hard? Zentex is asking, when will you guys tease us more with the MEG 271Q Mini LED? 1440p, 300Hz panel is insane. Somebody kept up with our uh, CES. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wish I could tell you when, uh, because actually for me that's also a question mark. So of course we have announced it, we have teased you guys what it's about, uh, what kind of hardware specs and features you can expect, but for me to actually get the sample, it's probably going to take a little while, so... But it's going to be a cool monitor. Yeah. So, as you can see here, this cutout needs to be covered, and lose a little no bit of force that. it's a clicky system so uh, well done so here we have it the mpg so from mag mpg meg 
the kind of like the high segment, uh, the MPG series, and then the Artemis lineup, which means that it's a thousand R curvature. And uh, yeah, the 273, so 27 inches, the third generation already, the CQRX, which means it's curved and it's QHD, it has RGB, and the X uh, already lets you know that it ha it's a very high refresh rate model. Um, of course, the QD in here stands for quantum dot. So yeah, if you really think about it, it's quite easy to understand. So we know, you know, it's it's kind of like a mouthful, and you know, we're not gonna deny it. We're working on it, trying to improve. Um, so um, yeah, you know, can be, be quite difficult patient. with all those different models and different characteristics. <clears throat> yeah, because you guys know how many really models we have, right? Yeah. We have been really, really, really busy for the past four years. Um, but okay, yeah. So let me show you guys a little bit what you can do with it. So first of all, the adjustable stand. Don't worry, I'll show you uh, in details and close up. I know the input, uh, the USB hubs, and etc. But right now, let me just show you the adjustable stand. Pretty straightforward, but very useful. Okay, so some general information. Uh, I've already shared some basic information with you guys, but <coughs> what's really going to be remarkable later is the uh, curvature. So uh, I will also show you in a different angle just how much curve there actually is with the 1000R. This one is going full banana. Yeah, 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 definitely. And if you're sitting in front of it, uh, it, it really just feels like the entire monitor is kind of like embracing you and just, you know, try to cuddle you. And that's really what's you know the best for your eyes because it's it's so much better it's less uh, it provides less fatigue uh, much more comfortable to look at and of course the immersion part so I got a very good question from Derek let me show you from a different angle Derek is asking can you play Minesweeper on it I'm pretty sure you can but um you can play Minesweeper I just don't know how hours. I'm pretty sure somebody can make it possible so let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Any fingerprints that you can see? Not yet. <laughs> I, I, try, I try my best to, uh, to clean it. <laughs> I'll check it again at the end of the stream. <laughs> so uh, let's take a closer look. Starting from this side, uh, you see there's a little button right here. If you push it, nothing is going to explode. Just no self-destruction mode? No, well, not yet. <laughs> but we have some more buttons. So, you know, you see this little red one here. So this is really dangerous. So don't push this unless it's like a life-threatening situation. Just kidding. This is a 5 feet joystick. Uh, so here you can hang up your headphone. Clayton is asking, can it go vertical? I think you mean like in portrait mode, Clayton? Clay no, you can't, unfortunately. So uh, the adjustable stand goes to, you know, it swivels, you can adjust the height, and you can also tilt, but you cannot set this to a portrait mode. Also, and in also general, yeah, for, for curved monitors, portrait mode is not that ideal, I think. So let's take a look at the back side. Let's get a closer look again. So, oh, oh, that's the wrong one. My bad. Let's get Lucky out of the way. So on the on this side we have the USB hub. So we have uh, USB 2.0s. Obviously, you're just gonna use this for like some easy peripherals. So uh, you don't need like 3.0 for that kind of speed. And but this a keyboard, way we mouse, can also, headset. Yeah, keep the cost down. Uh, but yeah, we also of course have the USB Type C right here for your charging purposes and uh, for data transfer as well. And then we have of course one uh, display port together with HDMI's. So in case you guys are wondering, the HDMI ports are not 2.1, they're still old school 2.0s. And of course we have the uh, power connection right here. And really guys, you gotta make sure that whenever you want to use the USB hub, make sure to plug in the USB upstream. And this cable of course comes uh, in the box as well. And before I forget, and of course here you also have your headphone jack. So pretty straightforward, 
And uh, yeah, that is it for the uh, inputs. If you guys want to see anything specific about the monitor, of course, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, I will just try to try my best to show you guys, you know, the, the ins and outs. But um, pretty much, this is it. Um, for what you can see, the backside, straightforward. And of course, later when I powered it up, you also see that this part <coughs> will fully light up with RGB, the cutouts here. Our Wolfman is saying that the cables go inside the stand or is it just a clip? Basically, you can route your cables through your stand. So there is a hole in there. And for example, your keyboard, mouse, cable, or whatever you want to put yeah, through it. So cable management, definitely no HDMI, problem. HDMI, display port, power, etc. Derek's saying, can't wait to see more of the Evangelion project. Well, I'm the actually trying to arrange that for you. So we get some cool stuff to show you. But that will still take a couple of weeks. Okay, so let me show you guys what kind of curvature we're talking about here. Uh, this is our MAG281 URF, which is our high performance 4K gaming monitor. Um, I think the custom version with just fingerprints. Yep, <laughs> all free and for nothing. <laughs> I actually live streamed this as well, I believe, about two or three weeks ago, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, this one is flat. So let me take a different perspective to show you guys how much curve there actually is. Oh, we need to oh, reconnect. Yeah, we have to reconnect, of course, again. There we are. Okay. So from edge to edge, you can see it's quite significant. And compare, even compared to like the traditional uh, curvatures, which are like 18, uh, around 1800R, this is pretty extreme. And with extreme, in this sense, it's extremely good because it really matches your peripheral vision, your eyes natural feel, feel to feel, much more than like an 1800 curvature. <laughs> Troy says, why is no one asking about RGB? Well, I can promise you it has RGB. <laughs> RGB, RGB, RGB. Of course it's RGB. You, know you need it roll. for the extra FPS. Now, let's get this down for now. <laughs> Gigaram says, flat shaming. <laughs> and just a little uh, small detail, actually. Uh, I actually forgot to tell you this, but... If I put it here, our emblem here, it's actually kind of like a see-through. So it's, it's not, uh, it's, there's actually a, like a centimeter distance between the emblem and the actual inside where the uh, RGB shines. So you can actually look through it, which is actually pretty cool for a uh, monitor because I haven't seen this yet. Just some small uh, trivia, I guess, huh? <coughs> Troy says 1500 R. No, this is 1000 uh, R. Yeah. So uh, the number. So even stronger curvature than 1500. The smaller the number <coughs> gets, the extremer or the more curvature there actually is. Because that can be a little bit confusing. Yeah. But yeah. So less here is actually more, because it actually refers to the radius. So it's like a thousand R. So it's like a one meter radius. So. The smaller the number, of course, the, 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 the bigger the curve. So the higher the radius, so a three meter radius, is going to be less curved than the same volume, for example, but then spread into a one meter radius, which is like a circle. So that's what it's actually referring to. So the smaller the number, the more curvature there, there's going to be. So right now, 1000R is the, the maximum curve like on a gaming monitor that you can find. And yeah. We actually have some more scientific data for you later to explain what is actually, uh, you know, the, the, the benefit and you know, what kind of research has been done with this kind of uh, curvature and your eye, eyes comfort and fatigue and really the immersion. Um, but yeah, so if you want to see anything else regarding the monitor, you know, the aesthetics, the outside or, you know, maybe the chin or something, let me know. Um, otherwise, 
I'm going to show you guys, well, tell you guys, you know, what kind of specs are we talking about, like a full overview, and give you an inside look at its features before we dive into a live demonstration of the features and software and also gameplay and yeah the live performance also of uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Hitang is asking, sorry to ask, what's the refresh rate of the curved one? It's 240 hertz. 240! And um, Gigaram is asking, what's the round thing at the bottom in the middle? I think uh, Gigaram is referring to the sensor at the front. Oh, you mean this, right? If you mean this, this is, well, uh, many of you guys might mistake this for a camera, but it's actually a light sensor. So with this light sensor, uh, well, should you choose to use the option, the feature, it will aut uh, automatically adjust the monitor's brightness uh, according to the environment so if it's really well lit up like in our studio here because I'm yeah <laughs> it's really it's really light in here uh, it's going to brighten up your monitor so uh, and vice versa if, if the environment is very dark it's going to lower the brightness of your monitor this way it can protect your eye uh, you know you can uh, sit behind the screen more comfortably and it actually also adjusts the color temperature as well automatically so this is what this little thing is for it's not a webcam so don't worry about privacy no one's gonna look through here it's just a sensor <coughs> our wolf man says I always turn it off because I play in the dark well what you don't actually have to turn it off then because it will automatically adjust the brightness so it will automatically turn down the brightness when you play in the dark exactly <clears throat> um, let's see what else Gigaram say oh my god 240 indeed uh, David James is asking HDR uh, yes guys all these kind of stuff I'm actually going to go through right now so all of the specs you can see I have them in, uh, here lined up in the table for you to go through so you know uh, you know pretty much every spec there is to know about the monitor Merrick's um, asking, so it's self-calibrator light adjustment or can we do it manually? I think you can switch it off and do it manually if you want to. Um, but yeah, the sensor will manually. automatically adjust it. So, for example, if you switch on the lights in the room, your monitor will go brighter. If you switch them off again, your brightness will go down again. That's basically yeah. how it works. Yeah, it's actually very similar, uh, if not exactly the same, as uh, the, the smart brightness function uh, on your smartphone as well. So if you have like auto sm brightness on, uh, if you go out and it's very very light, it's in the summer day, uh, you will see that your brightness will go up. And when you go inside and it's much darker and it's at night, you will see that the screen will also turn darker. It's the same principle here. But then on your monitor. Yep. Mm. Hypermodel is saying, my brother just bought or built a MSI computer. Nice, nice. Nice to hear. Another I like do your yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, wouldn't your shadow trick the sensor? Well, if your shadow is like right on top of the sensor, then yes, in that sense, because that's the area where light, where light is measured. And if there's like shadow, then indeed. So unless you have like a very bright spotlight or flute light, uh, floodlight shining right behind you towards the monitor, um, you're not going to have a problem. So because usually it's ending light that's uh, shining through the environment, uh, whether it's not, you know, LED spots or uh, some desk lamp. So you usually don't have lamps shining right against your back with a lot of intensity and rest of the room with no lights. So shouldn't be a problem with light um, impacting the uh, sensor. Uh, yes, indeed, it also comes with gaming OSD. Okay, since you guys have so many questions, let's just get into the uh, table that I have right here to show you guys what it is. Um, so yeah, I mentioned before, we have more models available in uh, the 273 range. Um, so for the QD versions, we have the X and the No X uh, gaming monitor. And actually, we have another model uh, coming up that's uh, non QD, but it still belongs to the same lineup, the 273 uh, CQR. <coughs> but if you are interested in the QD versions, we have two right now that's going to uh, come out very soon. 
Um, so here, yeah, I'm not going to name every single spec you can see for yourself. Um, just in case you guys are going to uh, spam, why is it VA and not IPS? Uh, IPS? Because we have been pushing out a lot of IPS monitors uh, the past year. Well, that is because right now uh, there's still an industry limitation as to how far the IPS panels are able to curve. So uh, it's not as flexible as VA. Uh, of course, the techniques, you know, they, they will improve with time. But right now, in order to achieve a thousand uh, hour curvature, VA is still the best choice. But um, so in order to combat the lack of color accuracy when it comes to VA, because VA is the, you know, they're excellent at contrast, uh, we have the quantum dot here implemented into the monitor so that you can still have like an IPS level uh, panel, which is still curved to like a thousand R curvature. Um, so yeah, uh, of the two models, the only difference basically, except for the price, is uh, spec wise, the refresh rate. So I already said earlier, the X indicates that it's a high refresh rate monitor, which means in this case, a 240 hertz. So pretty much you can play any esports game on here, uh, you know, assuming your GPU should be able to, uh, is able to push out as many as 240 FPS. You are definitely going to have an excellent experience with competitive games because this really gives you a big advantage compared to like plebs still using 60 hertz. Uh, no yeah, offense, just to be using 60 hertz <laughs> because I actually uh, was using 60 hertz myself for a very long time. Um, but yeah, it was just a joke. And then he got owned and then he upgraded to higher pressure. Exactly. <laughs> and now I belong to the one of the elites. Um, Simo Gaming is asking on Twitch, uh, what if I'm streaming and have my lights in front of me? Will this affect it? Yes. If you use studio lights, for example, you will light up the room quite a lot and that will definitely, when you use that sensor, it will also boost the brightness of your monitor. Um, Toasty Things also has a good question. Does it have an sRGB picture mode? Sorry, what? Does it have an sRGB picture mode? Uh, I preset? believe so, because uh, we have a lot of features and color profiles in the software, so uh, we can check uh, in just yeah, a we'll bit. Yeah, we'll go just through it later. Yeah. Um, anything else for now? Clado is um, asking, no G-Sync, but in reality we can use it, ain't it? You can switch it on, it's just not certified for G-Sync. So yeah, it may so work, it may not work properly. Um, but yes, you can switch it on in your NVIDIA settings um, nonetheless. And yes, you can uh, reduce the brightness. Uh, the peak, uh, peak brightness, yes, uh, it's actually, it goes higher than the certified HDR uh, 400, so 400 usually translates into 400 nits, so 600 and 600 nits, but uh, in this case the monitor actually exceeds the 400 nits brightness and it could go, go up to, yeah, as you can, um, actually... I think it was 550 nits, Yeah, because I, um, I was just checking, <coughs> did I put this into the table here, but I don't yeah. believe I did. But it goes around 550 and uh, plus, so yeah, the peak brightness, it's actually really bright. So in this case, you know, it's really good that you have like a feature like smart brightness so that you won't be blinded by 550 nits uh, brightness when it's like at its peak or 500. Uh, so that, you know, when it's needed or when it's dark, it will tune down the bright peak brightness in order to protect your eyes. Um, yeah, so um, actually it's 530 peak brightness. Yes, now I remember. Yeah, and I believe the 165 hertz is 550, I think. Yeah, okay, so um, uh, indeed uh, there's no yeah. G-Sync in here because we have a FreeSync Premium Pro. And um, Premium Pro here basically, you know, compared to Premium, means that here you have a HDR support as well compared to uh, the non-pro versions. Um, yeah, uh, the price, so for the uh, high refresh rate model, it's around 650, but take this with a grain of salt because um, you know, by the time it's launched, situations can be pretty <coughs> different, the, the variables can be different, you know, shipping costs, uh, you know, the, the shortages with hardware and chips and uh, local VAT and customs. So a lot of the variables can influence the price, but right now, just an indication, the uh, high refresh rate model can come at around 650 US dollars or euros. And the non 
uh, X version, so with 165 hertz refresh rate, will come at around 500 US dollars or euros. Um, so both of them are expected to be available around the world in the market uh, beginning of March. So you know, just a, uh, about a little bit more than a month patience. Uh, if you're interested in the monitor, you can go check them out uh, at your retail, uh, well, local retailers. Of course, make sure that you actually do have it in stock by the time you want to go check it out. Um, yeah. Our Wolfman is asking, what range is the FreeSync? I think for the 165 hertz model is 48 up to 165. Yeah, uh, is it, it also 48 for the 240 hertz? It definitely has low frame rate compensation, so I believe it even went below 48 uh, to around 30 plus FPS to activate the range. Uh, because of the L LFC, uh, but uh, to be exact, we might have to check uh, what the range is. But yeah, believe me, it goes really big. Mm, anything else for now? About the connections, are they curved or RGB enabled too? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> who knows, who knows? Well, technically, DisplayPort and HDMI can, of course, do RGB, but it's more the signal that goes that goes through it. Okay, so uh, then before I get into more specific features and explanations of them, uh, perhaps we can already see if we have a lucky winner already. Ooh, that's a good idea. So if you so haven't participated yet, make sure to do so. Go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Um, if you're a returning visitor, make sure to claim your loyalty bonus. If you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link uh, to Gleam that our bot will drop um, in the chat uh, once every five minutes, I believe. And here we have our first winner. I hope you can pronounce it, yeah? Uh, it's bigger for you. Skoldion. Skoldion, congratulations. Skoldion. You won our first game code for yeah, I hope Monster you, uh, Hunter Rise. I hope you're gonna enjoy hunting down monsters in Monster Hunter Rise. And to the rest of you guys, we still have more to uh, give away, so don't worry. Um, if you, you already signed up, no need to do anything again. Uh, so you will automatically be enrolled in the next drawings as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yes, I just uh, checked and confirmed the uh, the LFC range. So it starts actually with 48. So uh, indeed, Mike, you're right. So from 48 to, of course, uh, to 40, it's maximum uh, refresh rate. Okay, I, Twitch is uh, quite lively today. Oh, yeah, awesome. our winner is also on Twitch, I see. Skullian, congratulations. Uh, okay, so then uh, let's uh, get back to um, the information I was dealing with you guys. Yes. Okay. Now, we uh, already uh, kind of basically told you the basics regarding 1000R. So if you, uh, you know, visually, if we put this down, you know, like I said, with uh, 1800R, there's actually quite a lot of difference. So if you just compare to like the dotted line here with 1800R <laughs> and 2000R, you can see that there's like so much more. And obviously, you know, it's almost double the curvature. So it makes sense, right? Because uh, 2000 is like twice well, actually, 1000 is like twice the curvature as a 2000 R curvature. So 1800 makes sense. So this translates to millimeters, right? So 1000 R is yeah. one meter. Exactly. So 1000 is like referring to one meter, so 1000 yeah. millimeters. Um, yeah, so uh, basically the, the real benefit here is just, you know, it's, it's really much healthier for your eyes, for your comfort. And it takes you a lot more into the action by embracing, really, really matching your eyes' f uh, natural field of view. So you can really get into the game. And for this, we, uh, there's actually also a uh, research that we have done in combination with a uh, professor as well. So let's just uh, go through the video so you can also learn some stuff. Dr. Nima Kulbani Mujarad, and I am a lecturer and optometrist in the University of Bradford. 
The rise of the COVID pandemic in the last year has caused an increase in the amount of gaming and screen use in the general population. I'm very interested to see if we can build some scientific evidence behind curved screens in terms of its reducing any visual signs or symptoms of digital eye strain. So MSI have teamed up with us at the University of Bradford to look into the science of curved screens. So a curved screen in theory should reduce eye strain because everything is in the same plane of focus that you would normally have when viewing something. This experiment is aiming to look at the use of two different curved screens. So today we have two participants coming in. They'll test one screen on one day and come back and test the other screen on another day. They'll be playing on either a 1000R or a 1800R. The 1000R is the more curved screen. We'll be doing the visual checks before, followed by the actual experiment, and then we'll be doing post-vision checks. First test is an assessment of vision and visual clarity. The second is an assessment of low contrast clarity. Third is an assessment of the ability to focus at close. Another test will include a scan of the back of the eye. Next test is an assessment of the quality and quantity of tears. Following that, we have an assessment of the health of the front of the eye. And finally, during the experiment, we'll be assessing the blink rate of our participants. Now that we've done the baseline experiments and measures, we're now going to do the experiment with the game. We've selected a dynamic game so that there is a lot of concentration and uh, visual changes involved. During this time, we'll be monitoring blink rates as well as watching non-verbal signs of eye fatigue. My tentative predictions are that people will favour the more natural curved screen. That water is incredible, the detail. I think people will feel more immersed. They won't show non-verbal signs of uh, eye fatigue as much when using that screen. So now that we've concluded the experiment, we're going to repeat the measures that we did at the start to see if there are any differences. Here we're testing the ability for our participants to focus at close items, as well as maintain that focus up close. Anecdotally, people are very positive about the more curved screen. So the physical experience today with the screens and yesterday with the screens have been um, quite different to what I'm used to. It's, you know, it's been a much more easy experience than I've, I've had before. So much detail on that. I do find sometimes that the reason I stop playing a game is because my eyes are sore. If, uh, if a curved screen means that's not the reason I'm stopping playing, I, that can only be a good thing. I preferred the more curved screen. I was able to uh, find myself falling into that game and, and it was much more intimidating when the, you know, the, the bandits were try chasing me down. So yeah, it was, it was incredible. I believe screen use in the future is only likely to increase. I think we have to let the results and science of, of what we find out about curved screens shape what manufacturers begin to make in the future. The ability to use technology to try and avoid or, or reduce symptoms of any eye problems would be amazing. So guys, <clears throat> I hope you uh, learned a few things because I definitely did pick up some things here and there from uh, the wise guy, let me just call him that. Um, and how many times did you guys blink during a video? That was one <laughs> of the topics, right? <laughs> indeed, and uh, indeed, uh, I did find myself also have like uh, having like the same symptoms as to when I'm like watching uh, or you know just staring at the screen for a very long time that I do start to blink a lot more. And uh, usually, you know, I, I can really feel it coming up because my eyes are just so dry, and you know, it's all part of the game. So you know, this way at least we try to kind of combat these kind of fatigues as well. 
Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys can experience this for yourself uh, anytime soon because obviously this is not the only thousand dollar curved gaming monitor out there But you definitely could try it out for yourself because um, we are actually also have more models in thousand dollar if you're interested as well um, Yeah, hope you get to test it as well um, Actually the HDMI here on Quick uh, Quality only goes up to 144 hertz so you have to use the uh, display port if you want to make use <coughs> of the full 240 hertz uh, I rolled men Okay now let's get into premium uh, QD premium color so here actually we have the upgrade from the uh, Q, uh, Qu uh, quantum dot that we have been using for the past year and uh, here uh, we actually have uh, so much more to offer so let's just slowly go through them or quickly go through them one by one so that I can get to gameplay which is more the fun part <laughs> okay so let's just very briefly you know the quantum dot feature is actually not some software tuning some software tweaks uh, in, in an app because this is actually an visible layer that's added into the panel that really translates and absorbs and extracts light uh, so much more better and more efficient that the color accuracy and range is just so much more superior compared to a non-QD monitor. So this is not a software tweak we can enable or disable, it's exactly. actually independent. So, yeah, unless you physically remove it like from the panel, <laughs> but after that I'm, it's pretty much useless. And if we just compare this like for example uh, to a conventional non-QD, uh, also VA of course, the same panel times, uh, you know, there's like a significant difference when it comes to the color performance and that's also when it comes to VA back in the day, so especially when IPS became more and more popular, one of the drawbacks from VA because it just couldn't keep up with the color performance. But with a QD, it's actually uh, on the same level as the IPS uh, and uh, a very good IPS as well. So, and it's, it's not just that it's much more colorful, but it's also much more color accurate. So if you, for example, take a look at like the left side, which is a, like a non-QD one with a standard out of the box calibration as well. The whites there are, are much more toned uh, compared to the right side, which has the quantum dot implemented. There's like much more natural, realistic and accurate representation of how the colors should be. Um, so uh, Delta E2, sorry, e, uh, or equal S2, is uh, if you're familiar with it, if you're into uh, content creation, you you know that uh, this is like more or less an industry standards for as to the color uh, repro uh, reproduction of well, the accuracy of the monitor as to what kind of extent. So this is like an industry leading, um, let's say, certification. And uh, yeah, so basically if you're like into content creation as well, you are also set with this kind of setup that we have right here. Now, we also have uh, started to implement more and more out of, uh, well, out of the box calibration reports, which is already included in the box as well. But since this is like a very, very early sample that I have received from my lovely <coughs> colleagues from uh, our headquarters, I don't actually have like the original box with the uh, report in, uh, included as well so I just have to show it this way to you guys so you know that whenever you see this kind of reports that it is already uh, calibrated uh, in the factory before it wrote out to you now uh, let's move on to uh, the smart gaming features because this one uh, is actually very very packed with AI gaming as well so if you have watched the previous one that I did which was the 281 the high performance 4k gaming monitor um, you will see that um, here once again it's still packed um, well some features you might already be familiar with because I've already uh, gone through them in like the previous one with a different model but here, um, let me just uh, refresh your mind if you're, uh, uh, if you're also with us the last time and if you're new, pay attention because they can actually really give you an, a real-time uh, advantage in-game. So first of all, let's uh, talk about Smart Crosshair. So Smart Crosshair, basically what this does is that, especially with games where there's like a lot of environmental differences when it comes to like walls and shadows and contrast here and there, uh, color differences where it's very chaotic the smart crosshair makes sure that it's always uh, you know, Compared to where you're aiming at it's also it's always a very clear and uh, very sensible 
color compared to the background. So when you're like aiming at something that's like dark red, you're going to see a bright blue crosshair. And this actually happens like in real time. There's no delay because otherwise it would be pointless. And so I basically, when you, you look around, well. you see the color changing while you look around. Yeah, it's it's really like you're using <laughs> chameleon. Yeah. Uh, it's really also actually a lot faster than a chameleon can change its colors. So uh, so there's that. Now uh, the next one is optic scope. So the word kind of already, uh, the term already explains what it does, right? So it's like a scope. So it doesn't matter what you're using, what kind of games you're playing, because these features are all hardware accelerated. And it's an overlay on your screen. So it doesn't depend on what you're aiming at or what you're playing. Even if you're not playing, you can still activate this feature because it's a monitor dedicated feature. So what the optical scope does is that, as you can see here, it really just places an extra scoped in overlay on your screen which is basically a magnification of what you're seeing within that square and you can uh, choose the square to how much how, how big you actually want it and I also show you this uh, when I do the live demo as well but I just want to give you an overview of what's coming up and what kind of features are packed into the monitor and Console mode, so if you're really enjoying uh, consoles, uh, you know, compared to other conventional monitors that doesn't have console mode, even though it's like QHD, they cannot accept 4K signals. So what happens is that it will accept, or it will get the full HD signal from your console, and then it will upscale it to 2K or to Quad HD. And that way you actually lose details and clarity. Now what console mode will do, actually it, it reverses the process. It will accept 4K signal, but then the software will then smartly scale down the 4K into 2K. So you can imagine that from full HD going to 2K, you lose clarity and details. But if you go down from a higher clarity, a higher resolution to a lower resolution that's being scaled down, there's a lot more clarity to be uh, won in that area because the signal, the original signal, is just so much more better. And that's what the console mode will also do with, uh, in this case, a quality monitor and your console. So trust me, there's a lot of difference there in clarity and details. Uh, smart brightness, so yeah, if you have paid attention in the last half an hour, you already know what smart brightness does, right? So I don't really have to go into much details here. It will tune the brightness and the color temperature according to the environment. So the lighter the environment, the lighter your screen will be. The darker your environment, the darker your screen will be, as well as the color temperature. That's uh, you know all calculated by the AI in real time in order to uh, provide you with more comfort and less eye fatigue. Sticky UK69, I like that nickname. <laughs> it's asking. <laughs> Wait, which one? <laughs> Sticky UK69. Oh. It's asking, has it got that cheaty crosshair thing? You yes, got it. It does. <laughs> and we all know Mike or Michiel is a big fan of it, right? <laughs> I also think <coughs> it's a little bit cheaty. <laughs> um, yes, uh, indeed, guys. Uh, that is indeed very neat. Now, uh, sound tune. Especially nowadays with you know everybody, I'm pretty sure you guys, uh, some of you guys uh, also have some office jobs or you know uh, sometimes when working from home you have to communicate with other people or even just casually you know on Discord with your friends. If you have some annoying brothers or sisters running around or you know some neighbors that are doing some renovations, uh, you know with Soundtune, it's um, as you can see here. Let me show you with uh, the two built-in uh, mics at the front, right beside the uh, light sensor. You can use them to have a active noise cancelled uh, signal and also block out all the background noise that you're actually having at the moment. So your friends or your family, your colleagues will not hear you know, the, the kind of chaos that's like right behind you. Um, so I think, yeah, especially nowadays, this is very useful whether you're gaming or working or just casually chatting with your family or anyone. And this, you can all, uh, all of the features that I mentioned right now, you can all find very easily in the uh, Gaming Intelligence or the Gaming OSD app. So, and the last one that I want to tell you guys about is that if you like to work uh, with multiple sources, so two devices at the same time, for example, you have a laptop here and you have your uh, pre-owned or uh, pre-built or a uh, do-it-yourself desktop that you have built with pride sitting right next to it, you can use them both at the same time. 
And he, me, myself, when I'm working or even gaming, I can still use one side to uh, do one stuff. And then, you know, for those of you who doesn't have like two monitors, right? This will make your life a lot easier when it comes to like multitasking and also, um, you know, playing games, for example, on the left side and then seeing some cheat codes on the right side, you know, GTA. <coughs> It's a, it's a good process to save your time. Um, so yeah, that's, those were the uh, smart gaming features that I wanted to talk about because here uh, afterwards, it's all about action and demonstrations and gaming. And when talking about gaming, I just want to show you guys a few uh, summaries regarding you know, what kind of performance you, uh, you can expect from like a 4K gaming monitor. So obviously if you get like a, oh sorry, not 4K, but quality. So obviously if you have this kind of monitor, you want to play at quality as well. So you don't want to go into a game and you play m 4 d because that would be a shame. Now, so in 4K, um, it's actually quite hard. And then I just want to show you the difference as, you know, uh, if you're interested in 4K, and you're doubting between 4K and 440p, you know, what kind of performance uh, are we talking about here? What do you have to have in order to push this kind of resolution or um, FPS uh, to match it? I mean, the, sorry, the performance to match it. So here, uh, for example, Tom's Hardware, they have a nine game average. Actually, out of the nine games, uh, nine games, there are like seven titles which are AAA title games like, uh, like Metroid Exodus, so really hard to render games. And mixed in with some uh, Rainbow Six Siege and um, like Borderlands 3, which are a lot easier on the GPU as well. But majority of the games tested were very difficult to render. So here uh, on Ultra, you can see for yourself, uh, you need a lot of render power from your GPU if you want to push this kind of performance. And on Medium, there's a, a very, very big performance uh, difference already. So that's a good thing. So you have to play, uh, play around with the game settings to see how you can get out the best performance out of still the Still to get average over 100 FPS, you still need a very, very big yeah. graphics card. Actually, what setup are you using right now, Mikhail? I'm currently using RTX 3060 with a 5600X at home. And you play on quality, right? Yes. But, but I mostly play eSports titles, so they're not Right, so everything looks like potato. <laughs> I, I always play in, in potato quality, indeed. eSports um, settings, everything on low. <laughs> yeah, so what about you guys? You know, what, what, what kind of setup, setup are you using right now? Are you planning on doing any upgrades soon? <laughs> or uh, you know, are you uh, planning on upgrading your monitor? What kind of resolution you're playing? Let us know. And then, so if we then compare to 1440p, of course, what the monitor's resolution is, uh, there's tons of difference. So if you compare to the ultra setting compared to with 4K, there's like about 60% gain on average compared to 4K. So here, obviously, you have a lot more in return uh, logically from the same hardware. But this is just to give you an idea once again <laughs> when you're considering both and you want to know, you know what kind of Troy says, Mike updated his setup recently. His old setup was 32 years old. Yeah, almost. I was on a 6600K with a 1070. So it was quite a big step up. I'm just doing some math here, <coughs> some quick math. So if, if your old setup was like 32 years old, does that mean that you ha were born with a setup <laughs> for sure <laughs> first i got my setup and then i got my baby bed <laughs> right <laughs> you know you, your parents definitely ha had a priority straight <laughs> for sure <laughs> but what yeah, is my, he gonna need my 6600k was pretty old i think it was like 2015 so it was, it was quite old nice charlie holmes is saying my 3060 ti arrived today from blah, 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 first new build since 2015 nice. oh that must be such a good feeling also That's 2015, then yeah, then it will be yeah, make it's a, a big, big jump. <laughs> yeah. A lot has happened in the seven years time frame. Actually, if he wanted, he could have skipped like a whole generation of DDR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possible. Go straight to five. Uh, Dancer is saying i5 9400 with MSI RTX 2060. Sweet. Gonna upgrade to i9 9900K. Definitely got some uh, dollars in the box. Uh, Adrian Lewis saying I just upgraded to 165 uh, hertz monitor, totally boosted my PC from. Yeah, it makes quite a big, especially if you come from 60 hertz, and if you go to a high refresh like, rate, like so <laughs> usually like 1 120 or higher, then it's a big, big difference. <coughs> and depending on the game. It, it can make a huge difference. Like esports games and high refresh rate makes a big difference, I think. 
Well, we actually have someone here with a 9900K and RTX M RTX 3060 Gaming X Trio. Good for you, mate. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, yeah, Troy says, question to Mike, is it an MSI 3060? Yes, of course, it's the mini ITX version, the Arrow ITX. Yeah, and indeed, the MAG274 QRF uh, Quantum Dot version. I think that one is like our best performing uh, gaming monitor when it comes to realistic colors and color reproduction and also our round uh, performance. So yeah, <laughs> it's a good setup. Congrats, dude. Okay, let's continue because uh, now I actually have to hook up the monitor in order to show you guys a lot of the goodies that I've been <laughs> Mr. Mastodox knows me. Says, I suppose he got whatever fits in his tiny case, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, was just about to say, like, how does he know? But uh, of course, it's Mr. Mastodox. You know, he pretty much knows everything <laughs> about us. Probably more than us know about us. <laughs> <laughs> than we know about us. That was a derp. Okay, uh, let me grab some cables. Oh, nice. Gaius Emil has got the Optics MAG274 QRF quantum dot and he won it from the ha msi halloween competition yeah that one is our best reviewed monitor by uh, hardware unbox and those guys are very picky and a pain yeah sometimes but it's all for the greater good huh yeah it's good that they're you need to be critical i have to move lucky again Charlie Holmes is asking, is there anywhere to buy that lucky dragon figure on a desk? Which officially, one? no. This one? This one or this one? Or on the desk, okay, so this one, that one. No, officially they're not for sale. We can give you this one though. Sometimes people in the market do it, but yeah, so the only official way to get one is, for example, by getting one from an event yeah, or man. something. Where we have a booth. Lucky is not for sale, them. man. What are, what are you thinking? What are you <laughs> saying? Lucky is not for sale. That's dra you? dragon no trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just hooking up the cables and then we are ready to go. Charlie says the one up front in the middle. <laughs> oh, that one. Nope. Unfortunately, not for sale. Yeah, now, now it's even harder to, to get a physical lucky, of course, because of the, the current COVID situation. So, not as many events. Hopefully, in the future, when everything will go back to normal, we hope, then we can have more physical events again. And there you can have a chance to get a luck. One day. One day. Zentex says, it can also be 3D printed. <laughs> yes, definitely possible. Okay. All right, guys, let's kick off. Let me first open up the software so I can show you where you have to be. Okay, is this actually readable for you guys? If not, then uh, I will I think, uh, make increase it the scaling a little bit <coughs> to make it bigger. Let's go for 125. Let's see what happens then. Hmm. Oh, I have to sign out, I guess. Not sure why, but... Because it says so. <laughs> but what's the difference, right? Because I have to sign in again in order to use it. So <laughs> why is he making me do it? <laughs> you love it when Windows is like effing with you. But while you're logging in again, I think it's a good time to pick our second winner for today. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link in the chat. Um, there are bot drops there to glean. 
And if you already participated, there's no need to do anything. You will be automatically enrolled in the next drawings as well. And let me pick our next winner for today. Our next winner is Devin. Congratulations, you also All won right, the dude. game code for Monster Hunter Rise. Congrats, mate. Hope you have fun with it later. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think I've told you or we have told you this, but uh, in the coming days uh, we will email you the codes and also with the instructions as to how you can redeem it. So just, uh, yeah, take care of your inbox in the coming days. <clears throat> Let me go back to your... Yeah, so I think this <coughs> is better, or should it be even bigger? You can make it even bigger, I think. <clears throat> Especially for people watching on a phone, it can be a bit difficult. Yeah, 150 should be fine. Okay, guys, it's asking me to sign out again in order to change, keep the change. <coughs> I mean, come on. If you guys can't read this, let me know. Achilles is asking, is this the same for last week winners? What, what is the same for last week winners? Uh, if you mean that um, you'll be contacted by email last week as well, then yes. And if you mean if it's last, if the same game as last week, then also yes. And if you won but didn't get anything yet, let me know because then I kick Eric because I was on my holiday last week and Eric may have forgotten it. <laughs> I think I heard him talk so about we'll wake this him like up. yesterday or something, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so first of all, all of the magic um, <coughs> can be adjusted in the Gaming Intelligence app. First of all, if you want to have like the best color experience here, uh, just go for the predetermined uh, premium color yeah, Kelly says, I didn't get it yet. I will ask Eric and push him a little bit to send them out if he didn't do so yet. Um, also, make sure to check your, uh, your spam in your email. Because otherwise I may accuse him of something while he did it. But <laughs> okay, so here uh, in the first tab, you can see GI. So here, this is where you adjust all the smart gaming features. So for example, uh, if you want to activate uh, auto brightness or not, you can set it to auto, otherwise to off. Uh, sound tune, on or off. You can go for smart hair, a smart crosshair, choose the colors, uh, adjust the position, calibrate it, and choose different crosshair. And uh, KVM, it's uh, automatically set to auto, so if you uh, like connect two sources, you will recognize that and then activate KVM. Optic scope, here you can also choose for small, medium or large. That's the square one I'm talking about. I'll show you in CSGO in just a second and also the magnification. And of course, um, if you, well actually not if, but if you're in game, you're not going to go to the software each single time you want to activate or adjust or anything. So for that reason, we also have hotkeys. So here you can, for example, first of all, turn it on and then smart crosshair, just give it, uh, give it a uh, hotkey, which is like shift, control, alt. Actually, I'm just gonna use control, alt, and then up, or let's say, left and then let's go for oh, left go for optic scope or we'll use the same but then right this time um what else can we go for that's gonna be fun actually just let's let's go for this too <clears throat> and on the back side we also have like a joystick so if you want to uh, adjust some um, setups or uh, settings like the magnification or how big the optic scope is or you know different crosshair, you don't have to go out of your game. You can also use the joystick on the back, which will activate the uh, on-screen display, which uh, more or less looks like uh, this. 
Oh, we have to reconnect again. Oh, will do, will do. There we go. Yeah, we're back. So if we use the joystick, then this comes up. And here you can also adjust everything. So you don't have to go to the software each time. So this is only I'm if I'm not sure if it's already working. Oh. It still looks great. Oh, my side is connected, but... Uh, Let me try again. No, let me reboot Droid Cam quickly. Yeah, might be having some uh, Wi-Fi issues. And there we go. Okay, so if you use the joystick, here you can basically adjust all the settings. Now, this is only useful if you want to adjust the settings on what I just mentioned, so not to activate, because to activate, you can just use your hotkeys, which is a lot easier. But here you can also adjust everything. Uh, if you like, for example, smart crosshair, you can choose the icons here. Oh, I think we uh, froze again. <laughs> Try cam is not very cooperative today. Is the app still live on your device? Uh, no, actually the Wi-Fi just dropped, uh, so it's very inconsistent. Hmm. So we have to reconnect again, but let's try one more time. There we go. No, okay, let's do it quick before the Wi-Fi wi wi drops again. <laughs> so here, for example, too you can late, it dropped again. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I gave up. But basically, if you want to choose a different crosshair, choose the size of the magnification, or blah blah blah, etc., you can also use the joystick instead of getting out of your game each time and go to the software itself. Because the joystick is an over, uh, overlay on your screen, so it's, it's in uh, OSD, which is easier than getting into the software. So obviously, obviously a lot more you can do in the software. Uh, you can create your, uh, your own profiles uh, with uh, dedicated settings, like with brightness or uh, you know, what kind of other uh, enhancements you would like to apply here. You can also do in the uh, dedicated profile as well. Okay, so now let's get into the game and show you guys what I mean with the uh, gaming features. So your Wi-Fi keeps disconnecting from your... Yeah. That's strange. Indeed. Okay, the game is a bit slow to load. One of Jia's favorite games, CSGO. Actually, nowadays, it's a... Uh, it's a sad story when it comes to gaming, so uh, I have a lot to catch up. No, 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 not training. With bots, 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 bots. Harmless bots. Well, let's see if you still got it. <laughs> but it's not going to be so difficult since they're harmless. <laughs> Simon Gaming is asking, can you set the keybind from F13 to F24? Keep on that um, I haven't I haven't tried it myself yet, but I'm pretty sure you can. But I'm just not sure from F13 to F24. I only have 12 F keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit mm, hesitant on saying yes. Or do you mean through keyboard combinations, maybe? Okay, so let me go to an area. No, I'm not sure if it can do that. Okay, seems uh, quite fun here. Now, I can show you the, uh, let's say, the effects of the overlays because uh, they're not software-based, they're hardware-based, so I have to catch that with the phone that I was using. So I hope to God that the uh, Wi-Fi connection is stable now. Let's see. All right, Mike, let's go. 
Okay, okay, it works. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> so right now I have the smart crosshair on. So as you can see, it changes in real time. Uh, if you have like a sniper, you will not have a crosshair at all. So it worked oh, for a while. And it stopped working. Well, this is great. At least it worked for a moment. <laughs> Um, Summer Gaming says, I use the Stream Deck and I can enable F13 to F24 on them for extra input. Ooh, I'm not sure, I haven't tried that. I'm not sure if that works. Could be. Okay, let's buy a sniper. Was that slash enable aimbot? So In your here console? you see there's <laughs> no crosshair, right? But let's see what happens when you have the crosshair turned on. Is it working? Um, let <laughs> Do me see. we dare to try again? <laughs> I think I need to reconnect again. No, I cannot connect. Are you on the Wi-Fi? I'm on the Wi-Fi, but it's just very unstable. No, I, I, don't, oh, I got dropped. We Let need me to start try making network equipment so we can get a stable network here. Let's try a different uh, droid cam. I'm going to use mine. So let's try this. I have... Bop, 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 bop. Are you using different device? Yes, different device. Then I device. need the number so from your IP. The last three numbers are... Seven five six. Uh, the port's still correct. Yes. Let's see. There we go. All right. So, if you switch back, Mike, to uh, capture, yes. you see there is no crosshair at all. But if we then go back again, this is the magic of the smart crosshair. Look at it. And this changes color in real time, depending on what you're aiming at. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> okay, so then let me uh, walk around a little bit to show you something else. Just trying to get into position. So here, uh, it's, qu it's quite a distance. So obviously, if you're a sniper, you're an opera, you can zoom in and you can get some easy frags to the CT spawn. But what if you're having a non-scope weapon? So this is great if you can then use, uh, if I still remember the hotkey that I just set. Yes. So here you see there's nothing, but Oh, look at this. Look at the guy. Jazz yeah, going full cheat mode today. <laughs> so obviously this makes the pixels that you're trying to hit bigger, depending on the magnification. So right now I believe I have uh, twice the magnification. Let me check just to be sure. Optic scope. Scope size, it's medium. I prefer small, it's less distracting. And then uh, scope, uh, it's 2x. So let's see what happens with one and a half x. Okay, let me walk around to see a different spot where this is really useful. <coughs> like here. PC Benchmaster is saying the best part of it is, th is that it's not considered cheating. I think it depends on who you ask. Like online, yeah, there's not really a way to detect this because it's not something on your computer, it's something on your monitor. Um, but yeah, if you're doing this on an event, on a LAN party or something, 
I'm pretty sure you will find people that do consider this cheating. People are not going to be happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> iDemon79 says for boomers in CSGO. <laughs> Accessibility feature. So just to zoom out, give you an overview of the entire monitor and how big the square actually is. This is the smallest one with uh, the least magnification. One and a half times. So let's see if we go for four times. What happens then? Charlie's asking, the low hash rate graphics card Oof. have a negative effect on this. gaming FPS or only negatively impact miners? It only affects uh, mining performance, not gaming performance. Let's go to a different spot, just for the fun of it. So this guy is not that easy to hit when he's so small, but with the optic scope, he <coughs> he's suddenly a lot bigger. Look at it, how small he is. Look at it again. That's a hell of a difference. High Demon says pros play with uh, 4 by 3 aspect ratio and stretched to widescreen, and that's allowed. Yes, but then um, everyone has this the option to do this. Here, you need to have a monitor that can do this, so not everyone has got this feature on their monitor, and then it's of course debatable whether or not it's fair. But yeah, that's up to everyone to decide by themselves. I personally wouldn't use this. Eric would use this for sure. <laughs> and it's gone. The hotkey, remember guys. So yeah, it really depends on the, on the person whether or not it's ethical. Right, so um, yeah, um, <laughs> if you guys have any questions regarding those godly cheat modes, let us know. But basically, um, you know, with this kind of features, you know, it, it's really what the monitor, where the monitor is really trying to provide you with more value in order to help you game, in order to help you win, because these kind of small things can sometimes be a very, very big difference. Same thing as, you know, when someone is playing on a 60 hertz monitor and you are buying a 165 or 240 hertz monitor, is that cheating? I don't know. So it's, it's kind of like in the same context. You know, it's really just these kind of small gimmicks that's trying to, you know, especially in the competitive gaming world where, you know, every little thing matters. Um, yes, yeah, so it's really a difference between smashing your keyboard or uh, winning, with a, uh, winning with a smile. So uh, yeah, in my opinion. But uh, of course, not everybody would use it, but it's there if you like to use it. Um, yeah, okay, so then uh, we're going to go into uh, Monster Hunter, uh, finally, because we are nearing the end of the stream, and um, yeah, now we're just going to have some fun and some live benchmarks <coughs> or live performance uh, showcase with Monster Hunter. I do have to say, I more or less have like the best system that you can get right now on the market, <laughs> which is like fully equipped with DDR5, uh, 12900K, and 3090, uh, well, yeah, which is of course our ESUS TI5 12. Uh, so let's see how much butts we can kick with uh, Monster Hunter. Any Monster Hunter games uh, fans out there? I just like the cat. <laughs> Adrian Lewis is saying weird, unique feature. Oh, we would take that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. HD has got a, a request if we can add a single dot to the crosshair. Single dot. Uh, let me see if one. that's actually an option. I don't and think there is not, one right I'm now. pretty sure we can add it. Uh, we just have to talk to the engineers, you know. If we have found out that enough people would like to have this feature, like just a single dot, Pretty sure we can do it. I mean, we can. We're already doing it, but then with extra stripes on the sides and uh, yeah. 
so it shouldn't be a problem. Schnitt says on Twitch, I'd love to become a Monster Hunter fan. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to participate uh, in the giveaway. Then you may become one. There. Berucci on YouTube is a fan of Monster Hunter. I actually had a lot of fun uh, dressing up the, uh, the character because when you start a game, if you're not familiar with the game, um, you have to um, you know, basically do every little detail if you like to uh, for your character, you know, how it looks like, you know, the hair color, some um, uh, special effects, makeup, uh, hairstyle, anything really reminded me of Civ back in the days playing Sims and creating your own characters, you know, where you try to create yourself and see if he, if he actually did it, you know, and ask someone else, does he look like me? And, uh, it's, yeah, it's we don't, so we don't care about the character, all we care about is the cat. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to... Uh... Oh, wait, 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 where is my... When Eric and I were playing stats. Monster Hunter earlier, the, the, the first version during this live stream, I try to replicate my own cat in the game. Worked quite well. Oh yes, of course. I don't have afterburner turned on. Oh, we need to see those frame rates. Yeah. Now we have to. Uh, Adrian Lewis is asking, is "Are you again? running Max Graphics right now?" Well, I'll, I'll show you the uh, settings in just a second when I have rebooted the game because Afterburner wasn't on. Yeah, Adrian is also no booting up Afterburner, so you can see the, the FPS. Uh, Mark06 mm -hmm. asking, what kind of game is this? This is Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Rise, the one you can actually win today. So go to msi.com slash two slash insider or follow the direct link in the YouTube or Twitch chat to Gleam and then you can participate in the giveaway. All right, let's go again. Um, as far as we have seen and have heard and have uh, talked to other people about, Windows 11 doesn't really affect your gameplay, if not better. Yeah, sometimes optimization can be a little bit better, especially yeah. when you play, for example, on Elder Lake system with the P and E cores tends to work slightly better on Windows 11 in certain situations. I could have used some uh, inspiration when naming my pets, but uh, I guess this will do for now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's uh, uh, settings. Yes, yeah, settings, settings, settings. Display. So high is pretty much ultra here, but it doesn't go higher than high. So it doesn't sound high, but it's the highest setting. Make sure V stick is off. Uh, frame rate is not capped. Because if it's capped at 60, then uh, you're pretty much wasting away your monitor's capability of displaying 240 hertz or frames per second. And ba -ba -ba so yeah, image quality right now, it's rendering at 150% of its original uh, resolution because I'm rocking a 3090, why not? I can enjoy some uh, extra sharp uh, visuals. But, but of course, that will be more demanding because you're basically rendering yeah. So More let's set it to 100 resolution. and see what the difference will be with uh, frame rates. So everything is set to max. Um, yeah, 270, I'll take that. Where is it? It's, this is really annoying. Come on, just get out of here. So I would like to change the position of the stats. Simon Gaming is saying devs need to get rid of V-Sync. I think it's nice that the, the option is there. Um, if you don't have adaptive sync, 
and if you experience a lot of tearing. In certain games, tearing can be more annoying than the additional input lag. It really depends on the exact game. Like if, you, if you're playing a story-based game with a lot of cutscenes, um, tearing can be really annoying there and V-Sync sometimes doesn't affect you that much. But yeah, if you have the possibility for adaptive sync, so either free sync or G-Sync, um, I would always pick that option over V-Sync. Yes, give me some mission. How are you today? Here's the quest list. No. This sounds pretty boring. Nah, okay, let's go. Can you, also, can you also ride the cat? I can try. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's not do that to the cat. <laughs> let's go. All right, come here, boy. Actually, the visuals are pretty impressive, seeing as this game was actually originally planned for, well, it, it came out as a Nintendo Switch game. But they, uh, they really... Really? Is this originally a Switch game? Yeah. Okay. But they uh, really uh, buffed up the uh, visuals for the PC release. Yeah, there is a big difference in <laughs> rendering power on <laughs> between the Switch and the PC you're playing yeah. with right now. And the water actually looks really good. Imagine with uh, with ray tracing on, that'll be uh, quite epic. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I just noticed now the uh, MSI Insider logo is actually on top of the uh, stats, so I have to change it back again. Yeah, it's better to have it on the right. Your cat is actually in the water. Well, I hope he can swim. Cats are quite good swimmers. They just don't like it generally. Have you tried that with your cats? No, they don't like water. But they, they, I'm pretty sure if... I, I'm not going to do it, but if you would throw them in the water, they can swim up. All right. No, 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 no. Wrong side. Come on, meow, do something. Meow is just chilling. <laughs> I don't really see Mel like doing anything epic. But um, yeah, 1440p, uh, everything set to max. Uh, I'm running a comfortable 180 slash 220, I guess. It's just so smooth when you move around uh, because the monitor is also popping out like 240 uh, hertz. So um, yeah, the performance actually really matches the refresh rate. So you can really feel that when you move around, when you're in fast-paced action, that everything is so much more clear. It's more visible and sharp when you move around, and that's so. Yeah, and that's the beauty of a high refresh rate gaming monitor because everything just looks much more smoother. The overall experience is much better. Oh, the cat, uh, he throws grenades. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it. That's a good cat. That's a pretty heavy sword, man. <laughs> Brian says the good thing um, is that it means you can play it even on your potato PC. Yeah, if you put it on like moderate settings, it should run fine on even lower end PCs. Especially if you play on full HD resolution, should be fine in most situations. I'm trying to remember how to. SD Rockman is asking, what game is that and is it multiplayer? 
This is Monster Hunter Rise. Is this like, are you currently playing like online or something, or is this just no, single I'm, player? No, uh, right now I'm just playing campaign, but uh, there is the option to play with other pr players as well. Yeah, you, you can, can also, also play uh, co-op and stuff. Yeah, you can also invite your mates, uh, yeah. you can play together. There's no enemies here, but why not? I think I'm way too strong for those. Rafael Hassel asks, what do you think of the Microsoft takeover of Activision Blizzard? Still too early to tell, I think. You have to see how things pan out. Yeah, but it might be good for a change. Can I grab it? Can I grab it? Can I grab it? Yes. Ah. What is almost. that? It gives me a uh, energy buff. Oh. But I think it's too high to uh, reach. Nope. I need to work on my uh, ninja wall climb skills. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this game is actually really addictive. You have a very nice base that you can hang around and chill and ch uh, you know gather more quests and you can choose what kind of quest you want to go through and really try to build up your skills and gather materials. So yeah, really also a very uh, hack and slash game where you have to farm a lot. So if you're really into that kind of games, definitely still make sure to go to msidecom slash two slash insider and um, yeah, you can still win the game codes. They're actually saying uh, people keep asking about which game it is, don't they know wow. Monster Hunter? Well, before I actually played it on stream, I had never played Monster Hunter before. Either. I think it depends quite a lot on what kind of games you play usually. Yeah. If you're really much into eSports games, then I can imagine that you don't come across Monster Hunter. As the Rockman says, I would like to see more third-person games like these. Yeah, third-person can be nice. I'm currently... Um, at home, I'm playing It Takes Two together with my girlfriend. It's also a really fun game, I think. It's like a co-op game. Maybe we can do that on stream sometime. Come here! Get over here! Also third person. That was pretty sweet. Did it, boys. Lizard Completed the quest. <laughs> Not bad for boomers. <laughs> but um, yeah, obviously I'm still a very noob um, character, of course. Not me. It's a very low-level character. So of course, in order to you know have a lot more fancy attacks and special attacks, you have to progress a lot more in the game. So yeah, I hope uh, we can give out some games to you guys that you can uh, you know do a better job at progressing than uh, I have done so. Um, yeah, guys, if you have any questions regarding the game, yeah, let us know. Um, otherwise, uh, I think uh, we're just going to tell you what we're going to do next week. Yeah, perhaps I'll play this again after uh, afterwards. But for now, this will have to do, guys. And some of you are lucky enough to uh, also play this game at home. So before we close it off for today, shall we pick one last winner? Yes. For the last code of Monster Hunter Rise for today. So, who is the last winner of today? And you can read it right now. Actually, why don't we do one more? Because uh, I still have two one winners. More. Yeah, actually, I still have nice, one more nice. to give away. So lucky you guys. Now we'll pick two winners to close it off. Yeah. Our colleagues at HQ uh, were uh, kind enough to uh, grant us some keys. So uh, I guess we're just going to distribute everything that we have to you guys. And um, so we have two winners. They're on the screen right now. Oh, the chat. Congratulations, the chat. And uh, Elric 
Troll King. Congratulations. You Congratulations both won a game too. code for Monster Hunter Rise. Hope you rise up to the expectations. In the coming days, I will send the codes to you guys by email. So uh, check your inbox and uh, hope you're going to have fun. By the way, during the stream, because some people are mentioning that they won last week, but didn't get their code yet. I already kicked Eric under the table <laughs> during the stream. And uh, he says he's sending them out right now. <laughs> so keep an eye on your, uh, on your inbox if you won last week. And uh, for the winners for today, uh, in the coming days, we will also send you your codes. Yep. And um, yeah, guys, if you still have any questions, drop them now, because otherwise uh, you're very limited on time. Next week, we're going to, uh, actually, Peter is going to. I already um, saw some questions about this in chat. Yeah. I didn't oh. address them on purpose yet, but <laughs> next week we, we will yeah. answer all questions about this. Exactly. So next week they are going to extract a lot of gaming performance out of the RTX 3050. And uh, together with Rainbow Six Extraction, da -da -da, it's in the name, right? So you could have guessed. <laughs> um, yeah, and we also actually have quite some keys to give away uh, next week as well. So if you're a Rimble 6 fan, definitely make sure to tune in and also check out you know, the performance of the RTX 3050. So everything you would like to know about the GPU and the game, tune in next week. And uh, otherwise, I hope you guys stay safe. And thank you so much again for tuning in. We had a good time. Hope you had too. Hope and to see uh, you again next week. Same place, time. same time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.